Welcome back friends to another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia Global Character Overview video. Lids87 here and in this overview video I will be covering the upcoming character Altamecia. Altamecia has been hyped up for a while and now we will see if she truly lives up to the hype. Now I do want to say thank you guys for my last character overview covering Garland. The positivity from that video was just so awesome and I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Now as I get used to these overview videos, I will be swapping some things out to see what does and doesn't work. For this video, I did remove the crystal passives as of course you will be wanting all her crystal passives and I did remove her armor just to save some time. We will see how that goes and if you guys do want to see that information on my next overview video, just let me know. Again, as I go on with these overview videos, I will see what works and what doesn't work. So I greatly appreciate you guys understanding. Please keep in mind that I am using the JP side of the game as a reference, so name changes to a character's kit is possible on Global. I am also using the database as a source, and I will leave the link down below in the description. Before I get into it though, please remember to like and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this. <laughs> Altamecia. Altamecia is a villain from Final Fantasy VIII. She is a magic DPS unit with debuffs built into her kit. Her crystal affinity is green, with her weapon type being magic. Her bonus fear slots are A, A, and E. Now let's take a look at her abilities. Her first skill is called Protean Swords. Protean Swords is a 3 hit AoE magic brave attack plus single target HP attack. Brave hits are distributed when there are multiple enemies. Grants one stack of Maleficium for three turns. Max stacks is at five. Maleficium is her unique buff, which raises her max brave and attack. When Maleficium is at 5 stacks, turns Protean Swords into Protean Swords Plus, which is a 9 hit AoE magic brave plus single target HP attack. Her 15 CP weapon, Looking Glass, will increase the brave potency of Protean Swords, Protean Swords Plus, extended duration of Maleficium, and grants an additional stack of Maleficium. When using Maelstrom, increases brave damage reduction percentage, moderately raises Brave to a single target, and grants an additional stack of Maleficium. Her Crystal 55 passive, Protean Swords Extended, will tremendously raise total Brave potency, and Stolen Brave can overflow up to 120%. While Maleficium is active, turns Brave Attack into Maelstrom, which then becomes AoE, reduces all enemies Brave to 4 fifths before the Brave hits, increases Brave hits to 4, slightly raises Brave potency, and increases Maleficium stacks by 1. Her Crystal Strength 20 skill, Hell's Judgment, reduces target's Brave to 7 tenths before the Brave hits. 2 hit Magic Brave plus HP Attack, inflicts Sorcerer's Hatred for 3 turns, grants 1 stack of Maleficium for 3 turns, max stack is at 5. While Maleficium 5 is active, turns Hell's Judgment into Hell's Judgment Plus, which is a 2 hit AoE Magic Brave plus HP Attack. HP is split equally. Sorcerer's Hatred is a unique debuff which lowers defense and deals Brave damage. Her 35 CP weapon, Grandeur, will increase the Brave potency of Hell's Judgment, Hell's Judgment Plus, increase the Brave damage reduction percentage, extends the duration of Maleficium, grants an additional stack of Maleficium, extends the duration of Sorcerer's Hatred when using Hell's Judgment Plus, moderately raises Brave damage dealt to single target. Her Crystal Strength 60 passive, Hell's Judgment Extend will increase the Brave hits to 4 of Hell's Judgment, Hell's Judgment Plus, tremendously raises the Brave potency. When using Hell's Judgment Plus, 100% HP damage is dealt to all enemies. Her additional ability, Set Brave Regen, will grant Brave Regen to herself for 2 turns. Her Crystal Strength 70 Set Brave Regen Extend will moderately raise Int Brave upon use. Her Bloomstone passive will give Set Brave Regen an additional use and extend the duration of Set Brave Regen by 2 turns. Now let's take a look at Ultimecia's EX weapon, Nightmare. Nightmare gives Ultimecia the EX ability Apocalypse. Raises Brave based on Int Brave before Brave hits. Follows up with a 2 hit AoE Magic Brave plus HP attack. Moderately raises Brave damage dealt to single target. Stolen Brave can overflow up to 150%. HP damage is split equally amongst all enemies. No action delay does not increase turn count decreases friend support and summon action count. Grants Graver's Magic for 6 turns. Grants Special Effect Junction Graver's for 2 turns. Graver's Magic raises max brave and attack. While Junction Graver is active, no action delay for all abilities does not increase turn count, but this will decrease friend support and summon action count. So what this means is after using her EX ability, she will grant 
Junction Graver to herself, so she will get two free turns after using her EX ability. Now at 1-3, Apocalypse will get a slight increase in Brave Damage. At 2-3, slightly raises recast speed, and at 3-3, turns HP attack into HP attack plus, which is a three hit AOE magic brave attack plus single target HP attack, moderately raises brave damage dealt to a single target, stolen brave can overflow up to 120% of max brave, increases Maleficium's stacks by two. Once you realize Ultimecia's EX weapon at 0-3, when using Apocalypse, moderately raises the max brave overflow limit, turns HP attack plus into HP attack plus plus, which slightly raises the max brave overflow limit. At 1-3, increases the number of Brave hits to 4, tremendously raising the total Brave potency. At 2-3, when the quest starts, grants Graveyard's magic for 6 turns. And at 3-3, when using Apocalypse, doesn't consume ability use on the next turn. Now ingots to invest. If you are going to be investing in Ultimecia, she wants her EX plus at 3-3. Being able to use a skill for free is very powerful, especially in longer fights. She definitely deserves all 3 ingots. Ultimecia's bonus sphere is a type E bonus sphere, and when HP is at max and a critical hit occurs, inflicts a 30% defense down debuff for 6 turns. Now let's take a look at which artifact passage you should be looking for her. She definitely wants attack 108, she wants her C50 Sorceress of a Distant Future boost which raises int brave, max brave by 5% while Maleficium is active, and she wants max brave 330. Now the other unit on her banner that will also receive a realizable EX weapon is Squall. So once you realize Squall's Shear Trigger into Shear Trigger Plus, at 0-3 when using Assault Trigger, Stolen Brave can overflow up to 150% of Max Brave. At 1-3, slightly raises recast speed of Assault Trigger when using Assault Trigger, extends the duration of current buffs by 2 turns. At 2-3, when using Assault Trigger, grants Lionheart 3 instead of Lionheart 2. When Quest starts, grants Lionheart 3 for 8 turns. And at 3-3, when using Assault Trigger, deals a 6 hit melee Brave plus HP attack before the initial 8 hit Brave plus HP attack tremendously raises the total Brave potency, moderately raises the max Brave overflow limit. Now, if you are going to invest in Squall as a melee DPS unit, Squall also wants his EX plus to be at 3 3. Having those Brave attacks with another HP attack during his animation will help him dish out so much more damage. Just like Cloud, Squall will be dishing out more than 100,000 damage with his EX plus at 3-3. Definitely worth the ingots if you are going to invest in Squall. Squall's bonus sphere is a type A bonus sphere. When breaking target or attacking a broken target, raises max spray by 2% up to 5 times for a total of 10%. Now for the selective few that will be skipping out on Ultimecia, here are some other magic DPS units that you could potentially look at to fill that void. The other current active banner right now is Deuce's banner and on her banner is Ace. Ace is truly a force to be reckoned with, a great alternative as a magic DPS at the time of making this video. Now if you're not interested in Ace or Ultimecia, here are some upcoming alternative magic DPS units that you could potentially look at. Bon. Once he gets his rework, Bon will get back a percentage of Brave from the amount of HP damage that he has dealt. I would be worried though as he has low ability uses and has several elements tied to his kit as it could hinder his damage if resisted. Bon will be featured on Bosch's event. The Emperor. The Emperor specializes in shutting down multiple bosses with his traps. Definitely a noteworthy magic unit in the near future. Closing thoughts. I will say this now, Ultimecia definitely lives up to the hype that she has going for her. Having free turns and a free ability use after casting her EX ability will be very powerful in chaos fights with tight turn requirements. She will be a very strong unit for a few months, only falling off to units who just straight out out damage her like Golbet. Definitely a nice pickup though if you are looking to pull for her. For those that are not, is she mandatory for upcoming cast fights? No. I've spoken to other JP players who did not pull for her and still did fine beating upcoming content. Just be sure to fill the void with another magic DPS unit. That is it for this video friends, thank you very much for watching my second overview video. Be sure to sound off in the comments if you will be pulling or skipping for Altamecia. So until next time, good luck and have a good one.